Hey, what in the hell is happening? What? How are you? Nick DeGilio here. Uh, thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. Subscribe. It's free. New videos almost daily. I do a bunch of videos on Patreon as well. Uh, keep these videos going. Help me out on Patreon, and then you'll get some extra bonus stuff. Subscribe. Uh, pick a monthly tier. Pay three bucks, six bucks, like nine bucks, like 25 bucks a month, and you'll get some bonuses, usually like once or twice a month. I'll uh, put up some videos about what happened at WGN behind the scenes, giving you the real story, not the lies, and some other bonuses as well coming up in the future. Helps me out. All the videos that I do outside of my podcast, all the videos that I do are DA. DIY, and I want to keep doing them, uh, but I need some help. So help me out on Patreon. It's real easy. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Become a patron. Helps me out. Very cool. My podcast, it uh, drops every new episodes every Tuesday and Friday. You can get it at the Radio Misfits Network podcast, podcast network, uh, radiomisfits.com, and anywhere you get your podcast, any platform. Subscribe now. Podcasts are going. It's going great. Reviewing movies and doing all kinds of stuff. Speaking of movies, uh, I had an interesting uh, weekend of movies. Uh, Thursday night, I went to go see Jackass Forever, which I thought was great. I loved it. Uh, you can see the video where I full-on review it and talk about how not only is it hilarious and entertaining and wonderful and fucking hilarious and balls and testicles and all kinds of great stunts, but it's also an important movie. Seriously. I'm not kidding. It's an important movie that we need right now. And I got that uh, review. And then on Friday night, I went to the Music Box and saw three films. I saw Dennis Hopper's 1980 masterpiece, Out of the Blue, which has been restored in 4K. looks magnificent. It's a wonderful, ins- not wonderful, <laughs> wonderful is a loose word to use for it, but it's a great film. And then I saw Compartment Number 6, which is a film, uh, a Finnish and Russian film. A great film about two strangers who meet in the compartment of a train while they're uh, traveling uh, through Moscow during the dead of winter. Really a terrific film. And then the third movie I saw was Dawn of the Dead, George A. Romero's classic. One of the greatest films ever made in the history of film, and that's not up for debate because it's fucking true. Um, And it was amazing to see on the big screen. And then on Saturday, I went to go see Moonfall. So I had, you know, four great movies, great experiences, Jackass, Out of the Blue, Compartment Number 6, Dawn of the Dead, and then fucking Moonfall. Uh, This is the latest hunk of shit from Roland Emmerich, who is a hack. If you looked up the definition of hack in the dictionary, the old cliche, it would be a picture of fucking Roland Emmerich who is a horrible filmmaker, who has made completely shitty movies. There's only one movie that I kind of like that he directed, just one. And uh, he's become sort of the master of disaster. He's become the modern-day disaster movie filmmaker, like we fucking need disaster movies. Didn't we have enough of those in the 70s? Didn't we understand that when the 70s and the early 80s ended with the disaster movies that they should have ended then didn't didn't airplane when airplane came out didn't that really just wasn't that the death no the, the death roll of, of 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 disaster movies didn't that seriously say that's it here's the period on the end of the sentence no more fucking disaster movies sometimes they're fun you know sometimes even the, the more modern ones you know because you know big sci-fi movies and, and stuff like that half the world gets destroyed in a lot of them anyway But Roland Emmerich has dubbed himself the master of disaster because he makes movies where everything blows up. Like he, 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 I think in three of his movies, the White House blows up in three separate movies. Um, He sucks. Roland Emmerich sucks. He sucks. And his new movie, Moonfall, is, I mean, even on the level of the shit that Roland Emmerich has made, this one is even, I mean, it's worse than what you could imagine. Like I went in thinking, okay, this is going to be really terrible. And 45 minutes in, I said, wow, this is exceeding expectations of shittiness as minutes pass. It is fucking unbelievably awful. Another Roland Emmerich sack of crap, only this one. I mean, seriously, there were times in this movie I didn't know what the hell was going on. Like, I was like, I don't know what the fuck. I have no idea what the fuck is happening right now. Um, You know, Roland Emmerich has never made movies where the acting or the characters were three-dimensional. They weren't the strong suit. Roland Emmerich likes to blow stuff up and destroy the planet. 
Uh, like so, so three-dimensional characters and little things like relationships and acting and characters and people within movies that you actually care about that that doesn't exist in the world of Roland Emmerich and oh my God, does it not exist in Moonfall? Uh, Holly Berry is in it. Who I, 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 you know, I've been done with her for such a long time. I've never been a huge fan of hers uh, ever. I've liked her in a few movies. Uh, you know what? I'm just. I just. Every time I see her, her name on the credits, I'm like, oh god, what's going to happen here? Uh, I liked her in the John Wick movie. Most recently, I liked her in the John Wick movie. Never been a huge fan. Uh, Monsters Ball. All right, get out of here. Never been a fan. I like her in a few movies, but that's about it. Uh, Patrick Wilson, who I like, but has now been stuck in these stupid Conjuring movies. I think Patrick Wilson's a good, a good actor. Um, if you go back and look at. Um, you know, Mike Nichols' uh, HBO version of Angels in America. He's fucking great in that, perfectly cast. He, he's capable of being really good, except he's kind of bland and milk toast. and my God, is he bad in this, and is he miscast. And then there's this John Bradley guy who I guess is in Game of Thrones. I don't know. I don't watch that shit. Um, but, you know, Holly Berry and, and, and Patrick, well, I'm not going to go into the whole plot, but John Bradley is basically not Nick Frost. That's how they could have billed him. Quote, not Nick Frost, unquote. Not Nick Frost, because he's basically doing Nick Frost, and a really terrible Nick Frost at that. Uh, the, so, you know, and then, like, Michael Pena, unfortunately, shows up. Charlie Plummer is in it. Kelly Yu completely wasted. Uh, the moon has fallen off its orbit. It's going to smash into the Earth. The Earth is blowing up. There's water all over the place. People have to get to higher ground. Holly Berry and um, Patrick Wilson and not Nick Frost are going to take a space shuttle and try and save the world by going to the moon and blowing up some shit in the moon, and then you find out that the moon's not the moon. It's a superstructure which was invented by aliens who were actually us millions of years ago, humans. And then there are aliens, and it's and, and the moon is a spaceship. A very it's just it is a, convoluted is not even a word. They they haven't even if you could make up a word that's even more convoluted than the word convoluted, then you're kind of close to how fucking stupid and convoluted this movie is. It's unbelievably stupid. Um, stuff blows up. He knocks down, but the Chrysler building goes down in this one. Uh, a bunch of other buildings go. There's floods. It's, it's, I mean, he basically repeats a bunch of shit that he did in other movies. Uh, there are sequences that are taken straight from uh, uh, 2012, which was the movie he made about the Mayan prediction of the end of the world with John Cusack. That was the beginning of the end for Cusack, by the way. That was the beginning of the end. Like, he made that movie, and then afterwards he was like, all right, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. He's, he became a dickhead, and now he just makes straight-to-video shit. But that was like, when it was, when, after I saw 2012, I was like, nice job, John. Good job, buddy. Uh, so, so anyway, and then he like repeats a bunch of shit from the day, the day after tomorrow or whatever the fuck that movie was where, where Jake Gyllenhaal ran from cold. Same kind of shit happens in this. So it's basically like Roland Emmerich's greatest hits, except he has no greatest hits. It's Roland Emmerich's you know, repeating the same garbage that he did in other shitty movies. So that's that, so anyway, there you go. And then Donald Sutherland shows up. I hope the check cleared, Donald. Donald Sutherland shows up in a you know, as a mysterious scientist in a wheelchair who basically he's got one scene in the movie and he's essentially playing the same guy he played in JFK. He comes out and he wheels off a bunch of like conspiracy stuff. I'm surprised he didn't like start doing this. Who do, who benefits? Who did but whatever that bullshit speech he had in that dumbass JFK movie. But it's the same. He's basically I, I think it's the same character, only drunker and now in a wheelchair. That's it. He's basically the conspiracy idiot from JFK, old and drunk in a wheelchair, spouting off uh, theories about you know the government being behind cover-ups about the moon landing, the Apollo missions being bullshit. You know, so that's, so anyway, so Donald Sutherland shows up, and probably one of the only amusing moments in the entire movie was like, oh, all right, well, he's just, he took a paycheck and he decided I'll just do the same exact bullshit I did in JFK. Uh, so anyway, uh, Holly Berry, Patrick Wilson, and not Nick Frost go up and try to save the world from the moon, which is now a spaceship that was, I don't fucking know. Anyway, shit blows up. Now, and if you like Roland Emmerich movies, I don't know, if, one, you're an idiot. That's not that's not even up for debate. Hey, I like Roland Emmerich movies. Okay, we're done talking. You're a moron. But if you do, if for some unbelievable reason you had a lobotomy and you like Roland Emmerich movies, you'll probably like this. Because, but it is even if it's possible, it is even stupider. 
It's even more fucking stupid than the normal crap that is unleashed from Roland Emmerich. So I'm going to go through some of the Roland Emmerich titles here, just to just to back my case as Roland Emmerich being the definition of a goddamn hack. Oh, also, before we do this, let me just say this. Roland Emmerich was quoted as saying, and he's been jumping on the bandwagon that a lot of filmmakers have, where they're trashing Marvel movies and they're trashing, you know, franchise films. Uh, uh, like, uh, 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 Martin Scorsese took a swipe at him, you know, uh, and other directors have taken a swipe at him. Uh, Christopher Nolan took a little swipe at him. Um, you know, and, and so other filmmakers have been have have been doing this. But Roland Emmerich is the latest one. Ridley Scott, fuck Ridley Scott, by the way. Ridley Scott, you know, who's now just, you know, the, I, I will say this. The only thing because I think Ridley Scott's a fucking idiot, um, but he's just like a grumpy old man now. He is basically he is Abe Simpson. He's yelling at clouds now because his last two movies sucked and the last duel, which was crap, didn't make any money, and he's like blaming it on Marvel movies. All right, fine. Fucking moron. So anyway, Roland Emmerich now has jumped on the bandwagon. This guy has the nerve. Roland Emmerich has the nerve to, to slam Marvel movies and stuff. Here's his quote. Um, because naturally, Marvel and DC Comics and Star Wars have pretty much taken over and it's ruined our industry. Okay, now, let me just first of all say that I am not a blind follower of the Marvel movies, the DC movies, or the Star Wars movies. In fact, I'm very critical of most of them. Uh, I think the Marvel movies, there are good ones. Uh, I think for the most part, they're incredibly overrated, and I'm sick of the whole universe. I've done this a million times. The Marvel movies are there to make money, okay? Some of them are really well made. Some of them are good. Some of them suck. Almost all of them are purposely made to make another movie to make money. That's why if they kill off a fucking character, it doesn't matter because they're going to bring him back because this character was in a different universe and that didn't affect this one and Loki took his asshole and stuck it, you know, in a in a in a butt he put it on a button and that changed this and that brought Black Widow back to life and Spider-Man didn't uh, turn into dust and all this other all these bullshit excuses with this multiverse fuck off. You're bringing dead characters back because you want to make another movie because they make millions of dollars. That's it. Don't try to justify it with some bullshit about alternate universes and changing this. And fuck off. You, you, the, the character died, but you brought that character back because you wanted to have your cake and eat it too. Because people just line up and drop their money. So, as you can tell, I'm not a big fan. The DC movies are fucking terrible. Um, Star Wars movies, never been a Star Wars guy. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, like, I think there's some merit in people criticizing the Marvel movies and the Star Wars movies and the DC movies. I think there's some merit in that. Um, and, and, and I think that it's easy for young directors to go, oh, look, I can just make these movies like these Marvel movies instead of doing stuff that's original and more challenging and whatever. Now, there are filmmakers out there who make movies that are big budgeted, Christopher Nolan being one of them, who want to do something original, who want to challenge, who want to actually make cinema, but also big you know, rousing, money-making cinema. It, it can be done. It's just that people are lazy now, and a lot of that laziness comes from the fact that you can make billions of dollars repeating the same shit over and over and over and over and over again. And don't even get me started on the meta stuff. I'm so done with the goddamn meta, fan-pleasing internet. You internet trolls and all you idiots who, who, who get mad. You know, oh, Ghostbusters, the female Ghostbusters was a piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. Fuck you. The female Ghostbusters was great. In fact, the best of all of them. And then all of a sudden now we have to have this Ghostbusters Afterlife movie to apologize for the female Ghostbusters. Boom, baby. So anyway, all of this shit I kind of agree with. But Roland Emmerich is in no position to make those kind of comments. Roland Emmerich is, the la in fact, one of the last guys on the planet to criticize the movie industry because movies like the Marvel movies and the Star Wars movies make money. Listen to the movies that this jagoff has made. Uh, going way back, in 1984, he did a German movie called The Noah's Ark Principle. And this was like a very similar to Moonfall. It was like uh, weapons of mass destruction have been banned, and they're sending out these astronauts to blow shit up in space in order to make sure that weapons of mass destruction don't get used. Same subplot is used in Moonfall. So this guy's, this was 1984. So this is how far... You know, this is how far this guy's come in, in, along in, in creativity. 
uh, uh, Making Contact is another one, Moon 44. But then the first one that he made that made a lot of money was Universal Soldier. And this is the only one that I kind of like. This is, uh, wh wh who the hell was it? was Van Damage, v Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, but it was Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren or some big, dumb, lunkhead idiot. And it it was the it, it came out right at the time when all the the uh, Van Damme movies were making a lot of money, and uh, as a Van Damme movie, it's not too bad. It has a few moments. Um, so that one, you know, that one I kind of uh, I kind of like. Um, he also uh, directed Stargate, uh, which is a movie that's the only legitimate one that I actually like is Stargate, and that's with um, uh, Kurt Russell and James Spader. Um, and I, I, that's the only, it's, 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 it's a very stupid movie. And again, convoluted, but see, it's one of the few Roland Emmerich movies that I don't despise. And now we get into shit, shit after shit, after shit, after shit, Independence Day, one of the worst movies ever made. One of the truly, one of the most offensive movies ever made, incredibly xenophobic, um, uh, and just, just a, just a, just a pile of shit. One of the dumbest movies ever made. Uh, began my hatred of Will Smith, which continues to this day. I cannot fucking stand Will Smith. And this is the movie that really I was like, okay, I can't even with this guy. Um, but it, they blew up the White House. It's aliens. And it, ma it, it, it made a ton of money. Independence Day is a piece of shit. It's crap. Uh, let's move on from Independence Day to Godzilla. Unspeakable. I won't even talk about it. Won't even talk about it. His version of Godzilla... Uh, the Patriot with uh, with uh, Melly Gibson's racist ass Melly Gibson's. Um, it's a uh, uh, it, it's a it's a war movie, um, and it, it's it, it, it he plays. I can't even remember. Some somebody kills his son, and he goes after him. Uh, and it's it's just it's ridiculous. During Revolutionary War, and Heath Ledger is in it. It's stupid. Uh, so, I mean, it's better than Godzilla, and it's better than Independence Day, but it's still not good. The Day After Tomorrow, as I mentioned before, Dennis Quaid, Jake Gyllenhaal. Again, this is a disaster movie. There's climate shit happening all over the world. Shit's falling down. Uh, the Statue of Liberty gets full of ice. The You know, uh, it, global change and all this other shit. There's one scene in the movie where Jake Gyllenhaal runs from cold. Awful. So that's another one. Uh, Day After Tomorrow. 10,000 B.C., which was his, like, uh, caveman movie. Neanderthal movie. Uh, where nobody spoke in it, really. Uh, and uh, another piece of shit. I saw it in IMAX. That didn't help. Uh, 2012, as I mentioned before, was this disaster movie where the Mayans were predicting that in December of 2012, the world was going to end. And so he made a movie where the world ended and the whole place blew up and there was a ship that was going to take people away from Earth and repopulate and just uh, John Cusack was in it, a whole bunch of other assholes stuff blew up awful uh, then he made anonymous he tried to be all uh, he tried to suddenly become you know an intellectual filmmaker and he made this horrible movie uh, which was about uh, Edward de Vere who was the uh, Earl of Oxford uh, Oxford who was uh, there's a there's a conspiracy theory that he actually wrote all of, all of Shakespeare's plays and, and, and sonnets and stuff uh, and so it was about that and Reese Ilfen played him. Uh, and it's f terrible. It, it is as bad a movie as you would expect the director of Independence Day making about Shakespeare or about the writings of Shakespeare. I mean, if you seriously, Roland Emmerich makes a movie about a guy who claims to be a period piece about Shakespeare. It's as bad as you think it is. Then he went back to the normal shit that he normally does, stuff blowing up. And he did White House Down. And this is the one with the Channing Tatum and Jamie Foxx, not to be confused with the other one, Olympus has fallen, or whatever the fuck it is, with uh, uh, Gerard Butler and Morgan Freeman, and they made like eight of those. There's like all kinds of other crap has fallen uh, since then. But White House Down was the movie where uh, uh, the White House blows up again, and they go after Jamie Foxx, who's the president, and Channing Tatum is like the Secret Service guy. Garbage. Uh, and then Independence Day Resurgence, the sequel that nobody wanted. Even fans of the stupid-ass, worthless Independence Day original movie didn't fucking want it. 20 years later, this asshole makes a sequel to Independence Day. And it's as bad as you can possibly think. I mean, even fans of Independence Day, who are dumb, even fans of Independence Day, acknowledge that this is a piece of shit. 
So it's the sequel that nobody wanted. Although now we get sequels that nobody want all the time. Does anybody really? Did anybody really want the the Halloween sequels? These Jamie, these Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Danny McBride, uh, 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 David Gordon Green bullshit Halloween movies. No, and I could name a million more sequels and reboots that nobody really wants, but we're getting them because it's meta, and that's what we do now because movie makers uh, are morons. But anyway, so resurgence, Independence Day resurgence. All right. And uh, and then uh, Midway, he did a remake of uh, Midway, you know, big war movie stuff, bombs dropping, all that stuff. They already made a movie in the 70s about the Midway attacks. Uh, and so there you go. And then that brings us to Moonfall, the latest sack of crap. So this is his this is his filmography. Moonfall, Midway, Independence Day Resurgence, White House Down, Anonymous, 2012, 10,000 B.C., The Day After Tomorrow, The Patriot, Godzilla, Independence Day, Universal Soldier. Those are the main ones, and then he did some uh, lower-budget, straight-to-video stuff before he really took off as a filmmaker. This is the guy. That's the resume of the guy who said, because naturally Marvel and DC Comics and Star Wars have pretty much taken over, and it's ruining our industry. The guy who directed those movies that I just mentioned, he said that. Roland Emmerich. Roland Emmerich sucks. So there you go. Moonfall unbelievably bad and nobody went to see it over the weekend i'm looking at some of the numbers here it's sunday morning and some of the numbers are coming in nobody's going to see everybody's going to see jackass which they should because it rules um but yeah roland emmerich you suck dude you suck so anyway uh all right roland emmerich is a terrible filmmaker um and uh, i hope you have a a lovely sunday and uh, we'll talk to you soon subscribe to my page help me out on patreon uh, patreon.com slash nick d show give now and uh, new podcast uh, drops on Tuesday. Yeah.